Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, it is Friday, January the 5th. The time is 7.30 p.m. Central Standard. And I know I have not uploaded a video in a few months. Um, in full disclosure, I am full-time employed now. I'm a practicing attorney. And so my opportunities to record videos have been uh, limited. Um, I do want to move forward with this with this YouTube channel, and I'd like to continue pushing on um, making videos, but my opportunities to do that as a full-time uh, practicing attorney is limited. So with that being said, my intention moving forward with this channel is to periodically review the futures market, but only with uh, one product. Uh, I trade the micro ES. You can see the ES here. I trade on a broker called TradeStation. Um, you will hear me oftentimes uh, refer, talk about referrals to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, and uh, American Express credit cards. Um, all of those things are subject to your own risk. There's, there's no right way uh, to do it, to go about how you want to start your trading journey. Um, for myself, I only trade live at this point. Uh, I pretty much, I, I don't personally use Top Step or Apex at this point. However, it is an option for you, and so I'm going to continue to uh, put the referral links there. Please use them if you want to go with that route. Uh, but that being said, uh, in full disclosure, I am not at this time using Top Step or Apex. I simply trade on my own uh, live brokerage account. Okay, so it is. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's move to uh, let's move to the uh, disclosures. I am uh, not a financial advisor. Uh, I'm an attorney in the state of Texas, so I don't do I don't do finances. Um, I cannot advise you on securities, and I'm. Whatever you do with your money is completely up to you. So that is that disclaimer. Uh, futures trading involves substantial risk, as does all forms of trading, and you could lose uh, all of the money in your account, uh, if not more. Um, you click the button, it's up to you. I simply talk about the market. Okay, guys, um, with that being said, let's go over some of the trades that I executed today, uh, and then I'm going to review the market. So let's take a look at our daily chart on the MES, and I'm going to take my uh, executions off. Uh, okay, so looking at the, the daily chart, and I kind of want to just do daily recaps. Uh, I might have a look at the, the weekly chart as well, though, at the end of this video. So today's uh, candle traded uh, to the low. You can see uh, ICT's fair value gap, the, the high of this candle right here. If you are just watching this video, you have no idea who ICT is or what ICT is, you can look through my video library or you can go onto uh, ICT's channel. I'm an ICT futures trader. I use his concepts uh, with my own trading plan in order to, that's how I make my trades basically. That's how I, that's how I make my decisions. So, um, well, you can see that here on the daily chart, we ended up uh, trading down to the high of a candle that we formed on Tuesday, uh, the 12th of December, 2023. That number came in at 4701 spot 50. So you had a good opportunity. The market traded a little bit below that 47, let's see, 4702. This high was 4701 spot 50. So it got very close. Um, if you were in the ballpark, if you were looking at the daily chart and you saw this fair value gap from point A, to point B, you could have uh, entered long at some point, entered long on a limit and made a good trade. Um, other than that, there were some other opportunities. For example, I, I had a short trade that I put in at 47. Uh, when the market traded back up to it, the low here, 47, 46, spot 25, which was here. Uh, I was taking some heat on the trade. If you don't know what heat is, heat basically means drawdown. You get a feeling of heat because you're losing money. Um, so anyways, that's what heat is. So let's go down to the 10 minute chart for Friday, the, uh, let's see, Friday, January 5th. I might make a video on Sunday talking about the week ahead. I might not. Uh, my intention with this channel right now is simply to keep to daily recaps. Uh, cause like I said, I'm working now full time, 50 to 60 hours a week. So I just can't be on YouTube that often. So looking at our uh, regular trading hours, I want to point out some different opportunities that you had. 
Uh, let's go to the electronic trading hours. We had a news release today, so we had an economic calendar release on January the 5th. We had non-farm payrolls. So the market was particularly volatile today. And whenever you see any of these high-impact high news events, you can expect the market to be volatile, and it was today. So early on in the day, you had an opportunity, going back to our daily chart, to have a limit order in the market and get long somewhere in the ballpark of 47.06 to 47.03 uh, quarters, somewhere in the ballpark there. And if you held long, you'll notice that the market, if you identify this fair value gap here on the left, uh, would have had an excellent trade there. Looks like that would have been somewhere in the ballpark of 50 points, which is not a bad day on one micro contract that's uh, 250. So you can just go up from there. Um, so you had a long opportunity here right on the market open. The market rallied up and traded back into this, this fair value gap, which you can see high, I'm highlighting in the cursor. Coming into the lunch session remember i'm on new york standard time even though i live in central time i always apply new york local time here on trading view you can see that the market formed a double top high so we formed that initial high traded down halfway into this uh, large sort of range candle and then we came and retested which the market oftentimes likes to think uh, test certain levels you know twice three times that's some fairly common market behavior so you had multiple opportunities to, to get in short um, at this point if you wanted to take a day trade short. Um, this rejection block right here, if you placed a limit order right there, you had about an hour or so for that order to get filled. I would have placed it right there at 47, 57, three quarters, and at which point you could have held the trade all the way back down to retesting this rejection block, and there was also some uh, inefficiencies right there. You see that long wick candle on this this 10 minute candle. So the market came, retested that inefficiency, moved during the afternoon session, we got to move higher. We traded through this fair value gap, giving you another opportunity to short. And then the market came, retested this rejection block here at 47.22, three quarters. And then the market again rallied higher. So fill in this uh, fair value gap here. Um, I will show you my trade executions and you can see how I did today. Um, I initially got in long a little bit too early, held the trade for a few hours. I was in drawdown during all of this and then I ended up closing the trade about for a wash at 47.31 halves. And then I shorted the market here at 47.46, so right here. Again I was taking heat on the trade so I ended up closing it out. Uh, 47.46, 47.45, so basically another wash, three ticks. Uh, I bought the market again, 47.36, bought 7.5, took a little bit of heat on the trade, ended up profiting. Uh, I, I tracked it pretty well, covered it here nearly at that fair value gap, covered it a little bit early. Went short again, again, a uh, little bit of a wash. I longed the market again, a little bit of a wash. So overall, I did make a, a, a profit today, but it wasn't perfect. Um, in full disclosure, guys, I only enter in on limit orders now. I look at ICT levels. I enter in on the limit order, and then I'm looking for an ICT level again to exit. I, I oftentimes, guys, one of my biggest mistakes is I don't necessarily let my winning trades run you know, to the level that I'm anticipating. I, I take profits or I just take the whole position off. Um, it's just how it's just how I trade. I could probably work on that, and I'm not extracting the full value, uh, full alpha out of my trades that I should be. Uh, but overall, it was a profitable day for me. I think I made about two hundred dollars. Um, so that is what we're looking at here on Friday, January the fifth. You had some opportunities here on the non-farm payrolls. And I might come back on, on Sunday and make another another video, but let's have a look at the weekly chart. Take my executions off. Looking at the weekly chart, we can see that the start of the start of the new year here in 2024, the, the market has a big fat candle, and we went to let's see this weekly fair value gap. Traded down to the consequent encroachment. The consequent encroachment of this fair value gap. Uh, which is the 50% retracement of this fair value gap here. You can see that we tagged it and then traded higher. 
The other model that uh, Michael Huddleston refers to uh, oftentimes, again, if, you, if you're not knowing who I'm talking about, you need to go look up ICT Trader on YouTube. You will find him. He has another model that I sometimes like to employ. It's called the Thank God It's Friday model, which is a 20 to 30% weekly retracement on Friday. You can see that that model would also have, uh, if you would long the market somewhere down, somewhere down here on Friday and then look for the 20% or the 30% retracement, that model would have also generated a profit. So a few different models that generated alpha today. The thank God it's Friday model. If you use that successfully, that was that generated alpha. Um, looking at our rejection blocks, you could have also traded a rejection block model. So for example, right here, that was a rejection block that uh, would have worked out for you. Looking at our fair value fair value gap model, you could have shorted the market on this fair value gap. That would have also been successful for you. And then looking at some of our wick inefficiencies, I pointed this out before, but you did have a small wick inefficiency right there that you could have visually seen. And then this fair value gap here, you could have entered short or you could have used it to cover your long. So that fair value gap model right there would have worked out. Um, some other models that might have worked out for you, this could be argued as, a, as an order block here. And you could have used the midpoint or the mean threshold of that order block I'm highlighting with my cursor uh, to short the market at the same level. So um, order block model, fair value gap model, rejection block model, thank God it's Friday model, all of these could have led you to the right limit entries uh, and the right limit exits uh, on Friday. The thing that you had to look out for today was that we had non-form payroll, so you should have expected an increase in volatility, which is which is what happened. Um, similarly, we're seeing on January 11th, that is next Thursday, we've got core inflation coming out. I would expect next Thursday to be a volatile day, so be aware of that coming into the market next Thursday. If you are trading futures contracts, you always got to be aware of your economic releases. Okay, guys, um, affiliates. You should see in the description below three affiliates, Top Step, uh, Top Step Trader, Apex Trader Funding, and American Express uh, credit cards. Um, you get, if, if you sign up for American Ex an American Express credit card using my link, uh, American Express will give you $75 in rewards credits. Um, in full disclosure, it gives me $75 in rewards credits as well. If you sign up for Apex Trader Funding, um, Using my referral link, I do get a commission from that. Uh, similarly, if you sign up to Top Step Trader Funding using my link, uh, I do get an affiliate commission from that as well. So those that is the market recap that I have for you for Friday, January the 5th. Um, overall, the market starting in 2024 has been trading lower. But looking at kind of the weekly chart, I'm, I'm thinking that we're probably going to have a green candle next week. Um, or at least we're going to trade higher at some point and then maybe end up trading lower. I don't think that the market is going, uh, just looking visually at this chart, I don't see it just plunging straight down immediately. However, you gotta be aware of this uh, fair value gap, and of course we have fair value gaps here, and, and fair value gaps lower as well. So, you know, I am expecting the market to end up retracing all of this territory, uh, just not immediately. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, sign up for the affiliates and subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you.